Hello everyone, welcome to Eri Aviation Videos. My name is Erasmo Eri Malacara, and I'm flight instructor here in the airport of Edinburgh, Texas. And with me is my good friend, Michael. Hello, my name is Michael Garza, a former student with Eri Aviation. Uh, today, Eddie asked me to come here today to explain or to talk about uh, pre-flight briefing. That's correct. And today, we're going to explore the Cessna 150, the flight trainer uh, that we have right now here with us. Now, our friends, uh, Michael here, he's going to guide us around the airplane to do the checklist. It's very important to do the checklist outside the plane to make sure that everything is operational. Planes don't have accidents. Pilots have accidents, and mainly because they don't follow the checklist. So we need to do three checklists before we fly this plane. One over here outside, the second one inside the cockpit, and the third one before we take off on the runway. Extremely important to do it, because if it's something wrong with the plane, we are going to find it right there on the checklist. So now, Michael, he's going to guide us through the checklist on the Cessna 150. During the pre-flight checklist, uh, you want to make sure that the initial checklist is going to be uh, systematic and uh, very thorough uh, according to your POH. Every POH would be different according to the type of plane that you have and the year model of the plane. This particular plane, the 150, uh, has a very uh, general and broad um, uh, checklist, so uh, I took it upon myself to go and buy a Checkmate checklist that has a very thorough and systematic checklist that's required for this plane. I like to start off by putting the flaps all the way to uh, the 40 degree mark and uh, start uh, by looking at the fuselage. I want to make sure that um, all the bolts and the tacks are all in place. Those look pretty good there. You move on to the elevator, looking for the same thing. You're looking for cracks. Any screws that are going to be loose. At the same time, you want to move the elevator up and down to make sure that it's free and correct. This one is. At the same time, I want to check for all the tacks and screws that are holding this elevator up in place. Those all look good there. Now that the elevator's checked on the left side, you want to make sure that the cable on the bottom for the rudder and the cotter pins are all in place. as well as all the bolts and, and cotter pins that are inside the rudder. All those look good. You also want to check the rudder for freeness and correctness. That's all good. As well as the antenna and all the screws that attach the rudder in place. Moving on to the other side, you do the same thing as you did on the left side, check for all the bolts. The antenna looks good. All the cotter pins are in place to hold up the rudder. Moving on to the right side elevator. You want to check the same thing as you checked on the left side to make sure it's true and correct. This one is. And then move simultaneously with the one on the left side. At the same time, you want to check for your trim tab to make sure that it's still locked in place. If it's moving at, at any point, you need to double check that because it needs to be locked in place. The only time it should move is when you move it manually. The rod on the bottom looks good, the cutter pin's in place. All the screws look good. And at the same time, you're looking for any sort of cracks or any loose screws or pins, as well as the light. The light looks like it's intact. Moving on to the right side flap, you want to make sure that that's locked in place and it's not moving freely. There's also a pin in here and a rod that hold the uh, the flap in place. You want to make sure that that's free and correct and the bolt is in place. All the screws look good there. Now on to the right aileron. The aileron needs to be moving free and correct as well in the opposite direction as the one on the left side. 
If you look on top here, there's some cotter pins here with a pin that hold uh, four screws in place. You want to make sure that all those are in place. This particular paint has three sets. So I check the top, and then I check the bottom to make sure that all the screws are still in place with the bolts. There's also a uh, rod in here that needs to be free. If there's any tightness in there, that needs to be checked as well before flight. And all that looks good there. Same thing, I'm checking for cracks, checking for any, any loose pins or any screws that are loose. And this looks good there. Down to the right tire, you want to make sure that the tire has some tread on it, that it's full of pressure, the cotter pin is in place, no hydraulic fluid is leaking, no cracks in the brake or the disc. That all looks good there. After checking the right fuel sump, you want to come up to the top of the plane and check for how much fuel you have inside your tank. This particular plane has a universal calibration card that will determine how much fuel you have inside your tank. This one shows four here, so I'm looking at four and a half gallons here. I want to check this at least three or four times to make sure that, that it's accurate, and it is. Making sure that the cap is locked up. And also at the same time, you want to make sure that all your screws are intact and no cracks on top of your plane. After checking the right wing, we move up to the cowling section here where the motor is located. In here, I want to make sure that everything is intact here. There's no loose wires, no loose cables, nothing that's chafing or anything looks out of place. Everything in here looks good. All the springs look good. All the hoses down here, the exhaust hoses, they all look good with no hose in it. We move on to the oil. I like to check the oil by cleaning out the dipstick. And rechecking it for a, an accurate check. This one shows five quarts, so we're good there. This particular plane holds up to six quarts, no less than four quarts. Making sure that it's all locked up, ready to go. During the interior portion of the pre-flight, um, I want to go directly how it says on the checkmate uh, checklist. Uh, it starts off by checking your hobs and your tack time. Uh, the second thing we're going to check are the circuit breakers. I want to make sure that all the circuit breakers are intact and all the fuses are in place. Those all look good. Uh, and then I want to check the brake pedals. I want to make sure that the brakes are free. You want to first check for the seat track. Make sure that it's locked. All your avionics are off. Your carb heat is all the way off. Your beacon is on. This one stays on all the time. Your mixture is full and rich. You want to prime it. Hold on to your brakes. You want to make sure the area is clear. Clear! Clear right, clear left. Your master's on. Set. Start handle. At the same time, applying our brakes. Adjust the, um, the RPMs to about a thousand RPMs, and you want to make sure that the oil pressure is going to the normal setting. Now, Michael, he finished with the checklist and the second checklist. Edinburgh We're going to listen to Airbus. Automated weather observation. One, five, two, six, Zulu, weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero. 
4,300. Scattered ceiling, 5,000. Broken, 1, 1,000. Broken, temperature, 2, 8 Celsius. Dew point, 2, 0. Altimeter, 3, 0, 1, 3. Remarks. Density altitude, 1,400. Lightning distant, north and southeast. All right. Now we're ready to taxi. Uh, Michael, he already listened to the, the ADES, and we're fixing to get ready taxi. Annenberg traffic, 719 or 8X-ray at the ramps, taxiing to runway 14, Annenberg. F, clear center, and clear right. Very good. And our friends, uh, you are going to see how Michael follows this yellow line. It's uh, very important for us to follow the yellow line because that will guarantee us to have a clearance of any obstacles left or right. And he already uh, told everyone, advise everyone around here that he's taxing to Runway 14. So if it's another traffic around the area, he or she will know that he's taxing. They will be aware that he's take off. There you go. Now Michael is going to continue performing the third checklist, which it uh, makes sure that everything is operational, main that way we can take off uh, on runway 14 on end. Uh, the next uh, section we're going to cover is the uh, third and final checklist, which is the run up right before takeoff. Uh, you want to make sure your brakes are set, your fuel is on, the trim to takeoff. Flight controls. You want to make sure that those are also free and correct. All the instruments, uh, the airspeed indicator showing zero. Heading the compass is good. Attitude indicator is good. Vertical speed is at zero. Turn, uh, turn coordinator is at zero. Altimeter is set. Everything's in the green arc. We have fuel. Amps are good. Suction's good. I'll make sure the primer's in and lock. RPMs are run up to 600. Check for the magnetos. All pressure is good. All temperature is good. Idle is good. Making sure the engine doesn't close off. And the throttle of friction. All right, prior to takeoff, we want to make sure our flaps are at zero. Make sure the best power, which is all the way in. Car speed is off. Heat heat is required, we're not needing that. Heading to the compass, we're going to check that one more time. Doors and windows are locked. Transponder is good. Landing light is on. Probe is on. We know the time and brakes. Awesome. Traffic 7198 X ray, departing runway 14, touch and go, Edinburgh. Oh, Michael is going to make sure nobody's coming from the right or the left or the center. Clear right, clear center, clear left. Good job. Fantastic. Here we go on runway 14. Michael is applying full power. It all is moving. We have airspeed. It's going to make sure all the engine instruments are operational. Everything is great. We are committed for takeoff. We have a lot of birds around here, so we're going to be sure of we don't hit the birds. There you go. Now Michael is going to begin his rotation to 
keep the plane airborne. And we are airborne. Vandenberg Traffic Center 100 at X-ray, upwind 14 in the bird. Very good. And the next thing that Michael is going to do, and it's very important to don't hurry yourself, take our time. He's going to make sure that the climbing checklist is complete. So we don't forget anything in our flight. Okay. Uh, best power to 65 to 70. Uh, power is all the way in. Mixture is all the way in. Instruments look good. Taxi light is off. And the flight plan would be open if we were to do a flight plan. Awesome. Also very important before we tour to make sure that nobody's coming from the right, nobody's coming from the left. Got a big traffic center, one under an X-ray, left crosswind for runway one four in the bird. And Michael is reporting his position all the time because this is a uncontrolled airport means people without radios, they can come and land here. Or people with radios, they can come land here, but we don't have control towers. So we, the pilots, need to be very aware of our surroundings. So that's why we communicate all the time. Vandenberg traffic 7100 at X-ray, entering left downwind for runway 14 over. Beautiful. Now while we're here on downwind, uh, we have a good opportunity to perform our uh, landing checklist, which Michael is uh, going to continue with that. We'll do the pre-landing uh, checklist, which the landing light will be on. Belts and harnesses are on. Make sure the best power. RP would be on, but we're going to wait for a little bit. Make sure the fuel is on. And flaps as required, and we'll do our flaps in just a bit. And that concludes our the before landing or pre landing checklist uh, on the airport of Edinburgh. We want to make sure that the airspeed is in the white arc while we have a flap down. We're trying to descend down to 600 on base. All the gauges are good. Look at that. Edinburgh traffic 7100 at X-ray, entering left base for runway 14 at Berg. Uh, so there you go. Michael is going to continue scanning around for traffic. Make sure nobody's coming to the right. Nobody's coming in front of us and then it's cutting to the left. Awesome. Got a big traffic, 7100 head x-ray, entering final for runway 14, full stop in Now we'll do another set of flaps. No wind is coming. Oh, it's still kind of high. Got a big traffic, 7100 head x-ray, entering short final for runway 14, in He's flaring and wait with the nose of the horizon. See the plane does. Beautiful. That's awesome. all the way in. Repeat off. There you go. Now we're going to exit here on Papa. Annenberg, traffic 7100 at X-ray, clear runway 14 number. After landing, uh, with the flaps are going to be up, carb heat is off. Probes are off, we leave those on for security purposes. Um, landing night is off. Still heat is off. Never had that on. Prepare to take off, which is still, the, still at that level. That's part of step up. Edinburgh traffic 7198 X-ray, taxiing to the ramp center.
there you go my friends that's how we finish flying this beautiful Cessna 150 here with Michael our friend after today's flight um, it was a little tricky today uh, the winds are a little calm but the overcasted weather is coming in so um, just remember that every every landing that you do will always be different it will never be the same um, Thank you, Eddie, for letting me come over here and uh, do the pre-flight of the plane and, uh, and be able to do a touch and go for, for everyone out there. So stay tuned, my friends, for the next uh, chapter, the next videos. We are trying to do a series of videos by make and model, like the 150, then the 152, then the 172, 182, and so on. And the idea here is to share with you the flying characteristics of each plane. And our best wish is to wake up on you the virus of flying or the bug of aviation. Till the next time, be safe.